Greetings to you all. My name is Shen Jixiang. Very glad to participate in this year's Space Day of China. Last year, at the opening ceremony of the Space Day held in Nanjing, as the award presenter, I got an opportunity to meet many experts and scholars in the space industry, learned a lot of knowledge about space, and were touched by the space spirit of China. All of these made me very excited. This year, appointed as the ambassador of this event, I understand I'm shouldering more responsibility with a high view task to promote China's space industry together with all of you. I grew up in Beijing, and when I was a teenager, I enjoyed looking up at the stars just like everyone else. Back then, the city of Beijing was not as brightly lit as it is today, so the stars in the night sky were particularly brilliant and fascinating. In April 1970, I was in the countryside of Hubei province when Dongfang Hong Wan, China's first man made satellite, was launched successfully. This great national rejoicing news also inspired me to study harder and build our motherland. Later, I studied in the suburbs of Beijing for eight years as a worker working for a scientific research institute which developed integrated circuits for radio devices. I have witnessed that people have made a great contribution to the development of the motherland in terms of science and technology. After studying abroad, returning to China, I started my career in the field of the urban space and also worked in the cultural heritage conservation and museum. You might wonder what cultural heritage and museum work has to do with aviation industry. In the past, I thought there was no connection. But with the accumulation of my working experience, I found that in the history of Chinese civilization for more than 5,000 years, the ancient Chinese people made many remarkable achievements in the fields of astronomy and science and technology, which are the space genes in Chinese traditional culture. Probably be, the ancient people were more enthusiastic than us in observing the universe and guiding their production and life by observing and recording astronomical phenomena. For example, 5,300 years ago, the people of the ancient state of Liangzhu observed astronomy at the altar of Liang, Yaoshan Mountain for choosing the site of their capital city and then built a massive ancient city. And also during the Western Zhou Dynasty, the Usu took the a middle of heaven and earth as the astronomical observation center in order to choose the location of the capital city and also carry out a large scale science shuttle observations throughout the country, leaving the mass of observing shuttles in the book Rites of Zhou and Guo Shou Jing, a scientific in the Yuan Dynasty, built a stargazing station in Dengfeng, Henan province, and organized nationwide astronomical observation activities. And that was from the South China Sea to Siberia, and a total of 27 observation points were established. Today, Beijing Ancient Observatory, located in the southwest side of Jianguomen, is believed to be one of the oldest and best preserved astronomical observatories in the world. This observatory, which engaged in astronomical observations for nearly 500 years from AD 1442 to 1929, not only reflects the achievements of the development of ancient Chinese astronomy, also served as a historical witness of cultural exchange between the East and the West. The Palace Museum where I worked, also known as the Forbidden City, is endowed by ancient China's astronomers and with cosmic scientific they also believe to be the a very important assets and if you look at this planet, the a center of the a forbidden city are the whole of a supreme harmony, the whole of the a central harmony and the whole of preserving of harmony, all of which have the Chinese character harmony in their names. It shows that a harmonious world can only be realized by living in harmonious with nature, treating each other equally and nicely and keeping one's heart in peace. The three main halls form a clear central axis which extends 
in the north to the Bell and Drum Towers and the south to the Yongding Gate, a 7.8 kilometer central axis of Beijing. On both sides of this axis, sacrificial buildings such as temples and altars to the heaven, earth, the sun, the moon, mountains, rivers, storm, and clouds are arranged, as well as a large range of the asymmetrical, gentle, and open urban pattern. This is the social order established by the Chinese people after learning the natural laws of the universe. In 1709, the north-south central axis running through Beijing was determined as the prime meridian, namely zero degree line. It was actually a reaffirmation of the ancient Chinese notion of geographic centrality in an astronomical and a geolog geographical science. It was 175 years earlier than the International Conference in 1884, which adopted the meridian of a Greenwich Observatory Today, the Beijing Central Access will be declared as a world cultural heritage. Throughout the history of China civilization, astronomical observation and the calendar are inseparable. China has always been ahead of the world in revealing the movement laws of the sun, the moon, and the stars. Guo Shoujian, a scientist in the Yuan Dynasty, formulated the Shoushi calendar or the season granting calendar, which determined that the length of the tropical year was 365.2425 days, only 25.92 seconds of the current measurement of the year, and the same as that determined by the Gregorian calendar. It was obtained more than 300 years earlier. Most of the Chinese traditional festivals are originated in ancient times and related to the astronomical calendar, the Spring Festival, Lantern Festival, Qingming Festival, Dragon Boat Festival, and Odis, you name it, carried the cultural and natural connotations. They are closely related to people's real life today and together form the cultural memory and the root of Chinese nation. In ancient time, people took the stars as reference and invented the navigation technology of leading the stars across the ocean, which extended the maritime silk road directly to Africa. Today, China's Beidou satellite navigation system provides all weather high precision positioning and navigation services to the world, proving that China's space science and technology has reached the advanced international level. For a long time, there has been a cognitive mistake that ancient people, ancient China is strong in culture but weak in science and technology. In fact, there are many inventions in China besides the four great inventions. Since the beginning of the 21st century, the State Department of Cultural Relics has organized and implemented two major cultural projects. One is the Chinese Civilization Source Exploration Project, which focuses on the origin of Chinese civilization. Apart from archaeology and ancient literature research, ancient astronomy is also a very important field of study. Today, China's archaeologists and historians have demonstrated development of China's 5,000-year civilization with countless evidence. Another project is the Compass Plan, funding and displaying the value of ancient Chinese inventions and creations, explores and sorts out the cultural heritage of ancient Chinese inventions and creations, and publish a list of important scientific and technological inventions, including astronomical records showing the actual ordinary wisdom of the ancient Chinese. Ancient China not only made great achievements in the field of astronomy, but also had extensive exchanges with countries around the world. The collection of cultural relics in the Palace Museum includes a rich collection of astronomical instruments from the Qing Dynasty, such as those made by the Royal Workshop, tributes brought by the missionaries or foreign missions. Celestial instruments and observation instruments are included. China's space industry constantly draws nourishment from traditional Chinese culture, from Chang'e and Yutu to Tiangong and Tianwen, and to China's first Mars rover Zhurong, which was named at the opening ceremony of last year's China Space Day. They are all full of connotations of traditional Chinese culture. At the moment, we're still immersed in joy of a complete success of the Shenzhou 30-month space flight mission and the safe return of our three astronauts to the motherland. 
Chinese astronauts have carried out spacewalk, which is a new milestone in the history of China's space development and of epoch-making significance. The ancient Chinese dream of flying into the sky has finally come true, and space flight has lit up people's dreams. At present, dozens of asteroids discovered around the world have been named after outstanding Chinese people who have made tremendous contributions to the country and the nation. From the ancient scientists such as Zhu Chongzhi and Zhang Heng to the two bombs, one satellite heroes such as Qian Xuesen and Sun Jia Dong, as well as great figures of the country such as Yuan Longping and Tu Yuyu. And it's also worth being proud that there are also outstanding representatives of Chinese architecture, uh, Wu Liang Yu Star and Zhang Jin Tiu Star in space. On April 12, 2022, General Secretary Xi Jinping inspected the Wenchang Space Launch Site in Hainan Province, a holy land of the spirit of mind space flight, witnessing the height of the development of the Chinese nation and the human civilization. Both the space base and the launch tower are great heritage of the 20th century and 21st century, so we need to protect today for tomorrow. Looking back on history, every development and the progress of space industry highlights the value of human civilization. Every small step taken by space heroes is a giant leap forward for human civilization. The solid footprint step-by-step -step will become a cultural heritage integrated in the blood of Chinese nation and into the genes of Chinese civilization and become the pride of future generations of China. Thank you.